Okay, we're here for breakfast at day number three. Uh, it's 7.30 in the morning and we are about to head off of the breakfast. Uh, uh, 15 kilometers today, much shorter than yesterday. But they, they, they say the weather is going to be much worse. Strong winds, even a weather alert for wind I heard. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know too much Spanish, but I do know Rua do Apostolo. The way of the Apostle, the Apostle's way. You, you should be able to see here what happened tonight, in the night. Someone of us in the group said there was snowing at 6 o'clock, and you see here. So, it's been a cold night. Probably gonna be a wet day too. Somewhere along the way I see this. And we have to have look closely because this is a pretty interesting theological thing. It says Jesus saves. We, that's correct, but only himself. Now that's for us theologians to pick apart and uh, write the PhD dissertation about. You know, that's that's how much it is to this short little statement. So the short version is Pilgrim walk is not walking from A to B for just for the sake of walking. Pilgrim is a way of life with values that is in many ways contradictory to the westernized individualistic high pace lifestyle. This is nothing I have prepared so we'll see if it's if it's a long sermon for several hours while I'm walking but you know, people ask me, or I wonder, like, why, why do you do a pilgrimage? What's the point? Why, why is, why, what is it all about? Yes, I can uh, give you several reasons uh, from myself, but yeah. So this is physical aspect. That's probably the first one. You walk for days. Uh, it's a physical challenge, even though you're fit. Yeah, it's a physical challenge. So that's. Uh, that's one aspect of it. There's also the um, mental aspect to it. You um, you have to push your your mental uh, yeah your thinking. Like, can I do this? You have to you have to battle your your thoughts, push through. Yeah. So that's that's the other aspect. There's a spiritual aspect as well to it. And this you can explore how how much you want and go how deep you like. But um, the spiritual aspect is, to me, it's like you walk slow, you contemplate, you have time. Yeah, and now around Easter, it's it's easy to to think about Jesus um, during these days, yeah, Easter time, and you know so. But you know, you can do whatever you want out of the spiritual aspect. Many people along the Camino maybe even don't have a spiritual aspect of doing this. So, and before in, in history, as far as I know, this pilgrim walks was, you know, you walk to a holy place to, to have forgiveness of sins and to repent and to uh, overcome temptation. Yeah, there's all that kind of uh, to it, yes, as well. But um, yeah, and then there's the social aspect as well to this because we live in a Western uh, Western world, which is normally very individualistic, right? Only only me, the individual, uh, no one else. You know, you know that. But this pilgrim aspect is a communal aspect. Um, several hundred people do this. You walk. Uh, you walk alone, but you also walk together with everyone else uh, doing this um, this walk. You have the same destination, you have the same pur purpose in one way to to do this thing. So there is a communal aspect as well. You're on the same path uh, together, even though we don't know each other, uh, we do this together in, a, in one way. So that's a social aspect. You can also say that there is an, an, an environmental aspect as well. Um, and at least in Sweden, this is, 
this has become more and more now in recent years the environmental aspect and this is a little bit contradictory because I took a flight here and that's not very environmentally friendly yes uh, but when you walk here you t you you see nature and you, you see the environment in a very different way um, and you don't like my carbon footprint uh, or environmental impact while I'm walking and having this lifestyle is very low so in that sense there is an, an environmental aspect as well to, uh, to doing the pilgrim walk it's not completely uh, you know yeah as I said I took the flight here but but, you, but I think you get a point as to the environmental aspect yeah so I mean yeah you can think whatever you want about pilgrims yes and one thing more <laughs> I'm, I, I'm uh, thinking about is um, today in today's day in life every minute is planned every minute is you have something to do more or less you have plans for the day for the next day for you have a minute planned uh, life um, but if you do a pilgrim walk all of that goes out the window there's no way you can have you can have you can plan your day around minutes second uh, seconds and stuff there's no to-do list there's no boxes to check nothing like that and that's why this pilgrim walk is also like um, um, yeah it's opposite of that kind of lifestyle um, so I mean if you haven't done a pilgrim walk with all my heart do it uh, go, you might not even have to do five days but go for a pilgrim walk for two days for one day find a group do it by yourself just do it and see what happen, what can happen to you there's also that aspect the spiritual aspect let me explore a little bit more there if you read for example uh, Hebrews 11 uh, the chapter of faith again and again you you, you see that uh, those people they walked uh, uh, and lived on this earth by faith uh, they didn't see the end results they were kind of pilgrims on this uh, in this life looking for something better and we even have spiritual songs and hymns uh, on these uh, themes um, where where you get the idea that we are pilgrims walking this world uh, in, 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 in looking for something better in the future so that's the if you want a, a bit of a more spiritual aspect to it you can explore this aspect as well much more in detail okay let me continue on my little sermon I think I'm building a sermon here right now there's two kind of pilgrim stories I think of when I read the Bible one is um, when Jesus meets the disciples on the road to Emmaus these two disciples they're walking from one place to another yes they're discouraged from what happened uh, when Jesus died and they walk there alone you can get the mood of them uh, very discouraged and don't know what's happening and then they meet someone along the way they don't know it's Jesus they start to talk and Jesus explains to them while they are walking he explains to them uh, probably yeah basically about the messianic prophecies uh, in the Old Testament that happened while they were walking while they were in the one they do a pilgrim walk that's one story the other story I think about is um, Philip and the Ethiopian um, in Acts Philip is by the Holy Spirit sent to a desert road so he goes there to the desert road in the middle of the day no one is there and he meets the, the uh, Ethiopian uh, guy on a chariot traveling yeah ba back to Ethiopia or something you know you can you can uh, think about that as well but 
he is going on a long on a long uh, way back home to Ethiopia um, I don't know we're talking about months of traveling by uh, on a horse uh, chariot likely or so but yeah that's a pilgrim walk as well for him and for Philip and what happens um, they, they they go they walk along the way there and Philip is uh, sees that the man reads something and uh, the Ethiopian like can you help me understand what I'm reading and Philip is yes of course he does and uh, somewhere there they found some water and the Ethiopian is baptized this happens while they were on the way walking traveling um, and you know some people say I don't know how much truth it is probably a bit of it that this guy was one of the first uh, to take the gospel down to Ethiopia and then further Africa yeah you can argue about that but yeah you can think about that you can think it it is like that too so that's two stories in the Bible where yeah where you see something like a pilgrim walk but you also see that people are changed dramatically on this walk we must not forget that um, something happens when you're walking and I mean if you want to change in life you're tired and sick of tired of of uh, you know your minute planned life you, you have no free time or whatever be brave do a pyramid walk take four or five days doesn't have to be in Spain but do it and see what can happen to your life to your mind to your spirituality even to your body coming to one of the fir my first stop of the day and I think this is where I'm gonna go ahead and have my first stamp of today I believe this is uh, this is it <music> In Sweden and other places you probably have heard do not follow the crowd uh, follow your heart follow you know don't follow the big masses here walking the Camino it's exactly the opposite here you do best by following the big crowds because yeah everyone is walking the same way if you see one pilgrim taking off on his own into some strange path don't follow him. It's 11.15 and I'm having my first coffee break of the day and probably the only because I have just walked and walked and walked kind of in a flow and I have 24 minutes left to the destination of today. I've been all by myself uh, not talking to anyone and uh, yeah, now I deserve a little bit of an energy kick. So we're here, uh, you can see the way. This is Alexander Carpenter from Spectrum, the knee for tan, uh, from a Professor at Andrews. They are walking across uh, a really nice bridge along the Camino here. Uh, don't tell me about the history of the bridge, but it's uh, incredible uh, structure.